Path of Exile launches a brand new content update, a couple of titles have seen their last day, all that and more, I'm Zach Sharps and this is Free to Play Weekly. First up in the news this week, you know that old school title called Adventure Quest? Well, R6 Entertainment has been hard at work on a 3D version that's currently in alpha. That said, they have recently teased a brand new class for the game called the Guardian. By the gameplay trailer, it appears that this Guardian is somewhat of a paladin type, utilizing holy abilities to take down their foes. That's pretty much all the details I have for you though, because not much has been released thus far. However, I'm sure more details will emerge as the the weeks go on so if you're interested be sure to keep it locked on their official website. Those of you dungeon dwelling in the free to play Dungeons and Dragons inspired MMO Neverwinter should be quite happy to hear that the 10th expansion has been announced by Perfect World themselves. Along with this news comes information of a PlayStation 4 edition of the title but we don't care about that do we? Let's discuss this brand new expansion. Titled Storm King's Thunder, the new expansion will introduce a storyline in which giants rise, players will be asked to travel to Bryn Shandur and investigate the parents of Frost giants. Along the way you'll be able to explore three brand new zones, get new items and so on and so forth. As for when it will launch though, you can expect it to arrive on PC in August and on console including PS4 shortly after. Speaking of the PlayStation 4 version, those of you who wish to play yet another MMO on the best selling console, you will be able to do so sometime this summer. You know how we heard about the Prophecy update coming to the free-to-play action RPG Path of Exile not too long ago? Well, it appears to have officially launched. With all Grinding Gear games content updates, this one is packed with tons of goodies as well. You'll see new items such as divination cards, unique strong boxes, expanded skills, Prophecy Leagues which include a set of 40 new challenges, a new endgame labyrinth, plus the usual slew of technical improvements and much more much more. Overall, with all Passive Exile updates, this is just another reason why we love Grinding Gear games so, so much. Loads of new content every year, all within a great monetization model. Looking for a brand new free to play title to try out? Well, DSC Studio 22 has announced a brand new third person shooter filled with MOBA elements called Energy Heroes. The game pits teams of three players against one another in a battle for a resource called Energium. The game's current 10 year old lineup comes with a variety of types familiar to most shooter fans and can be combined into an array of differing teams. As with most shooters and MOBAs, Energy Heroes requires the teams to destroy an objective belonging to the opposing team. Our own Mike Byrne aka Magic Man did a first look on the title very recently, stating that it makes you lose the will to live. Ouch. If you wish to see why that is, be sure to check out that first look, but right now it's time for the question of the week. Last week on the show, I asked you guys what was the worst launch in MMO history. A good chunk of you stated Arc Age, or rather Q Age, so I chose one that was a bit more unique but just as accurate by a username Frieden who stated the following. Final Fantasy XIV is probably the worst I have ever seen. The game was so bad the director and producer were fired and a new director and a producer were brought in to fix the game. The game was so flawed they couldn't even fix it in the form it was in and had to rebuild it from the ground up. It even got a new game. So many things only made it worse. The subscription fees and the fact that it took on an actual chapter number from the franchise. It was a game that deeply hurt the trust players had in Square. Something the company I think recognized. Thanks for your guys responses as always and yes I do think they certainly did recognize that reception. As always if you want your comment possibly featured in next week's episode be sure to leave a comment down below. This week's question is, out of all the MMOs currently on the horizon, which one are you most looking forward to and why? Personally, despite it switching to buy to play, I'm still very much anticipating Albion Online and for free to play, I'm still anticipating Bless Online, despite the people who actually picked it up. Curious what you guys are looking forward to though. 
Last up in the news this week, we've known for a while that these titles would be biting the dust, pun totally intended here, but this week they saw their last login. The games I'm talking about are Nosgoth and Dust 514. The Legacy of Kane inspired Vampires vs. Humans title Nosgoth had its server shut down on May 30th, and the PS3 exclusive free to play shooter Dust 514 had its server shut down on May 31st. We can go on for a while about why each of these titles probably didn't hold their player bases for long, but out of all the titles that shut down this year, these two I think were the cream of the crop. Dust 514 was limited by the PlayStation 3, but overall was a fun shooter to play on a larger scale, and Nosgoth was limited by the oversaturated team-based brawler environment, causing matchmaking to be a dreadful experience. Sucks to see each of them take their leave, but Dust 514 will see a replacement soon, and I'm sure another team based brawler has already been announced. Oh, wait, there was one in this video. You know, it is also in this video a mention of giveaways, of course. Yes, be sure to head on over to MMOBomb.com, go to that giveaways page, and check it daily to ensure you never miss one. As for myself, signing out till next week's show, my name is Zach Sharps. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, by the way, down in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time.